Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel where we talk about real crimes and real people. We have cases that will make you cry, cases that will make you angry and also cases that will make you want to punch somebody in the face. And my question is what does this case makes you want to do? Please do subscribe and do all those shenanigans YouTube asks you to do to support content creators. I really appreciate it. So for today I bring you a story of jealousy and mean girls gone bad. This is the story of Michelle Avila who was murdered by two friends over boys. It doesn't matter in what year we are, what century we live in, women still try to destroy each other over some useless dude. So let's see what happened. Let's get started. Michelle Yvette Avila was born on February 8, 1968 in Los Angeles, California. Michelle, who was also known as Missy, lived with her mother Irene and her three brothers Ernie, Chris and Mark. Missy grew up in Arleta, Los Angeles, San Fernando Valley. She had a childhood friend named Karen Severson. The two were inseparable since they were eight years old. Both girls girls started attending San Fernando High School. Missy wanted to become a physical therapist. Karen, well, she became jealous of Missy. Why? Missy was more popular, more attractive. Missy got the attention of boys. So she started to spread more time with them instead of Karen. So Karen grew resentment and jealousy, drifted the two apart and the only way to deal with it was to start a rumor about Missy. Allegedly, Missy had been sleeping around with several boys who had girlfriends. So a group of girls beat up Missy. Well, things didn't end up there. Missy's nightmare involving boys was about to start and his name was Randy. Missy and Randy started dating when Missy was in her junior year. The things didn't last long. Randy liked to party and Missy had had enough. So she broke up with him and Karen as jealous as she was of Missy. Guess what she did? She went for the sloppy seconds route. She started dating Randy. Yes, that girl was jealous. That girl wanted to be Missy. Shortly after, Randy and Karen moved in together. Did Karen finally won over Missy? No, Randy was still into Missy and he wanted her back. Karen caught Randy pulling Missy into his lap and Missy told Randy she wasn't interested in getting back together. Missy knew Randy was a dud of a dude, so she told Karen to break up with him. You know, you deserve better kind of thing. Karen was angry, jealous and angry, and that wasn't a good combination. Karen stopped talking to Missy and the two actually got into a physical fight in a park where people witnessed Karen. Karen threatened Missy with a broken beer bottle and she then pushed and slapped Missy. But Karen's plans for Missy weren't over. She wanted to destroy Missy. On October 1985, Missy told her mother Irene she was going out with a friend from school, Laura Doyle. Laura picked up Missy and that was the last time Irene saw her daughter Missy alive. Four hours later, Laura called Missy's mother Irene and asked her to speak to Missy. To Irene's surprise, why? Irene thought Missy was with Laura and that's what she told her. Then Laura stated when she was with Missy, she dropped her with three boys who were driving a blue Camaro. Laura went for gas and when she came back, Missy and the three boys were gone. Where was Missy? On October 4th, three days after she was last seen, Michelle Avila's body was found by hikers with her face down in a stream in Big Tushunga Canyon in Los Angeles National Forest. Missy drowned in a few inches of water. Her long hair was cut off and she also had a four foot long log on top of her body. Michelle Avila was dead. She was murdered and Irene was living a mother's worst nightmare. Irene and Missy's family were grieving. Karen Siverson and Laura Doyle attended Missy's funeral. Laura sent a sympathy card or a guilty card with $20 in it. Karen moved in with Missy's family. She became obsessed with the murder. Irene thought Karen wanted to find out what happened to Missy, but truthfully, Karen just wanted to know how the investigation was going. Was there a suspect? Evidence. Karen visited Missy's grave several times a week. She covered the walls with Missy's pictures and newspapers clippings about the crime. She visited the creek where Missy's body was found and she also told Irene she had seen the ghost of Missy. Even though Karen inserted herself in Missy's family home, investigations when called, there were no leads and that's where it stayed for three years. 
Then on July 1988, a girl named Eva Churumbolo came forward. She contacted the authorities and gave a statement on what she had seen that day. She went to the mountains. Eva saw Laura and Karen push Missy down a path towards the creek at the time of Missy's death. With that information, authorities arrested Karen Sefferson and Laura Doyle. Both of them were charged with first-degree murder. During the trial, the prosecution stated Karen and Laura lured Missy to the creek. They confronted her about her alleged promiscuity. They also accused her of sleeping with their boyfriends and told her she had messed up with too many relationships. So Karen and Laura took action. They held Mrs. Face in the water until she died, then placed a four foot long with 100 pounds over Mrs. Body. On March 1990, Laura Doyle and Karen Sefferson were convicted of second degree murder. The prosecution wasn't able to convince the jury that the murder was planned. Both of them were sentenced to 15 years to life in prison. Well, regarding Laura Doyle, she was released from prison after serving 22 years in December 2012. During a parole hearing in 2002, Laura admitted to lure Missy into the water and also killing her. She stated Karen was the ringleader. That's not a surprise there. And that the two of them planned it and they did it. The motive was of course jealousy. And what about Karen? Karen was released from prison on December 9th, 2011. She served 23 and a half years. After she left prison, she wanted to tell her story and of course make a few bucks. She stated they accused Missy of doing things, you know, sleeping with boys, and Missy never said sorry. She wanted to torment her, but things got out of hand. After 23 years in prison, Karen jealousy lived on. She still accused Missy of sleeping with boys who had girlfriends. Karen also wrote a book about the crime and her experience in prison. And she also made a TV deal. Missy's family wasn't happy, so they sued Karen in 2015. So Karen wasn't able to profit from the sales, which let me say, they weren't great. The state of California passed the Missy's Law, which stated entities who help criminals to publish work need to contact the families of the victims. So I ask you, do you think the murder was premeditated?